2212314. Got it, everyone, go. So I've been meaning to do this for a really long time, but I've also been putting it off for a really long time. Today I'm going to take a painting from one of you guys and paint over it and offer some critique. The reason I've been putting off this video is because I didn't want it to come off as egotistical. Today's video is not coming from a place of superiority, I'm not saying I'm a better artist than anyone else, but today I purely want to focus on the practical aspect of critique. And if you're facing similar art issues as today's featured artist, then hopefully this video speaks directly to you. So today we're going to talk about three issues that a lot of artists, myself included, face when it comes to painting. So we're going to look at perspective, lighting and texture. Now this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial on any of these topics, but today I'm going to focus a little more on troubleshooting and solving some common issues with these three aspects of painting. And today's artist is a wonderful member of our Discord server, a cat lover 2212314 who has very kindly offered up her painting for today's video. She goes by Nisuki Cake here on YouTube, and I will leave a link to her music channel down in the description, as well as up in the cards. Go check her out. And thank you so much, Nisuki, for participating in today's video. I hope you like it and find it helpful. I'm telling you guys, you need to come join the Discord server. Link is in the description. We share art resources, more video ideas such as this one, and everyone is just really lovely and wholesome. So check out the link in the description as well as the pinned comment below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, then please, please let me know by giving this a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button below. Leave me a comment letting me know if you'd like to see more of these because I genuinely enjoyed doing this video. So yeah, if you want to see more of these in the future, then let me know in a comment below. Um, and with all of that said, let's dive into our very first adjustment layer. Now, this was a name, again, suggested by the Discord server, so Thanks you guys for participating in that discussion. Um, my brain just wasn't functioning that day, so I kind of needed help. But I, I like that name, Adjustment Layer. That's pretty cool. So yeah, let's dive in. So today we're going to look at this super cool painting by one of our members on the Discord server. In her message, she said that she drew this in Krita and that she was inspired by the style of Charles E and Wang Ling. She also mentioned that she's not too familiar with painting backgrounds, so that's kind of something I want to look at a little in depth today. But for the most part, I want to focus on the three main issues that I mentioned in the intro, which are perspective, lighting, and texture. So without much further ado, let's dive into this paint over. So one of the first things that I want to talk about here is the perspective. Perspective in general is something every artist struggles with at some point, no matter how long they've been drawing for. But this is twice as hard in a painting like this, where we're looking at a dynamic perspective. And by dynamic, I mostly mean that the horizon is slanted, which automatically makes the scene look unbalanced and hence adds a ton of movement pretty much instantly. However, when we throw in a bunch of different points of perspective, it starts to get way more complicated, especially if these points don't work together too well. So here, for instance, I found at least four separate points of perspective. Let's look at them a little closely. I always start by looking at the horizon and following lines that run almost parallel to it. So we have these wooden slats running up the sidewall, and if we were to find the meeting point for all of these slats at the horizon, this is what the simplest perspective point would look like. Next, let's look at the tiles on the floor. These actually run almost opposite to the wooden slats, so we can assume that is the second point of perspective, which would lie something like this. Now let's take a look at the vertical bars on the windows. This is going to add a third point of perspective, which is what creates a three-dimensional space for the painting. And this point of convergence would lie somewhere at the top of the painting, a little to the left. Cool, that's awesome, we have our three-point perspective for the background. 
But then when we look at the character, there's a bit of an issue because the legs seem to be getting unusually smaller as they reach the ground, suggesting a bit of foreshortening. In order to accommodate that, we're going to have to add a fourth point of perspective from the feet up. So this one will have to lie below the bottom of the painting. But then we look at the tiles again and that perspective point doesn't work with the vertical alignment of these tiles. So we'd have to add a fifth point. And now it is all just all over the place, right? So let's start by simplifying. We're going to start with a super basic two point perspective. I'm going to keep that first point as it is, but the second point of perspective is going to be at the bottom left of the screen to try and match the vertical lines on the floor. What we now end up with is a completely different horizon that actually goes across the floor. However, we can still have that major line where the floor meets the wall because it falls in line with the first perspective grid. So if we were to now adjust everything, it would look something like this. Next, we're going to adjust that third point of perspective, which is what gives us that 3D space. We're going to keep it simple and follow the lines of the window panes. However, that means we're going to have to adjust the character, especially in the legs. So I'm going to quickly do that and paint over the scene where needed, just to make everything fit the new perspective grid a lot better. I've also taken the liberty of simplifying the clothing just for now. We'll go back and work with the textures later on in the video. So after adjusting the perspective for the painting, here is what we have. Already the scene is looking a lot cleaner purely from fixing up some angles. Alright, so if you're completely new to lighting, I did an in-depth video about how I set up my lighting step by step, which I have linked up in the cards. Today I want to specifically look at how we can push the lighting in this particular scene to make it more dramatic and visually striking. So the first thing I notice is that we have a very dim, diffusely lit scene, and that is likely the original intention of the artist. However, I would say the lighting is a little too diffuse in that there is so much opportunity here to create some super interesting shapes while further pushing the mood. Let's start with a key light, which is this glow coming in from what looks like a doorway that might be outside of the frame. We have some dramatic shadow on either side of the scene, but let's really push it. I want to go for a slightly warmer tone just because there is so much cool in the scene already and I'd like to balance it out a little. What we're going to do is start finding some interesting dramatic shapes in the scene. So I definitely want the character to be the focus of this scene, so we're going to start by brightening her up quite a bit. However, I'm not just going to go in with a straight up white, we still kind of want to keep it dark and moody. So I'm only really finding the surfaces on her that would really pop in this light from the doorway. And I'm going to use a fairly hard brush for this because we want to create those hard edge shapes that will add a lot of character to the character. You know what I mean. <laughs> now, because we do still have a window, it would cast a little bit of a secondary light. However, it is on the side of the character that is facing away from us. So really all we're going to see is some rim light from the window and maybe some edging on the window panes, possibly even a very faint glow in the shadowy areas of the scene. I'm also just adding some rim light to the edges of the tiles just to balance out that warm key light. So after adjusting for lighting, here is what we have so far.
All right, for our final step today, let's look at fixing up some of the textures. By the way, this is pretty much the order in which I paint my usual paintings from scratch, which is to first set up a solid perspective, then put down lighting, and then finally do the texture work. Just thought I'd mention that, it is a good workflow and it's worked for me for years now. With the textures in the original painting, there were a couple of issues I noticed immediately. First was that the textures did not follow the lighting setup. So with the hair and the skirt for instance, while you could see a lot of texture, it still appeared flat because the texture had not been adjusted to fit the kind of light and shadow that you would see in the scene. And this is why we've looked at lighting first, is so that we know what the textures would look like in this specific lighting setup. And secondly, I feel like there was a bit of an imbalance in textures in that the character was highly textured but the rest of the scene wasn't. Now look, I get that keeping most of the texture on the character is a compositional choice because it helps draw focus towards the character. We've seen this in style studies time and time again. However, when you only texture the character and specifically keep everything else entirely too flat, you're gonna lose the one fundamental element of good composition, which is balance. While you have areas of high texture, they need to be balanced out by areas of low texture, not just completely flat, untextured elements. In fact, once you get the hang of texturing, you'll actually really grow to love it because textures add so much richness to a painting, it's almost unreal. Today, I don't just want to hand paint every single texture, because I know you guys are not gonna wanna sit down and hand paint every single texture. We're here to make life easier, so I'm gonna actually use some photo textures. These are all open source and available on stock image sites. The one I used was unsplash.com. And rather than just pasting them in and leaving it at that, I'm actually gonna adjust the perspective of these textures and play around with the blending modes. Just keep adjusting until I find the look that I like. Again, we're not applying a crazy amount of texture to every single element. In fact, in the brightest brights and the darkest darks, you'll find that I'm not really applying too much texture at all. And this is the balance that I mentioned earlier. You see textures in most of the mid-tones, but I'm making sure to manipulate them in such a way that your main focus is still the character, but there is enough detail to the rest of the scene such that your eye is drawn all around the painting rather than just looking at the character and then moving on. Also, like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that your texture works with the lighting setup. So if something has ridge detail, make sure that the ridges are lit correctly in that the areas facing the light are bright and the other surfaces are dark and so on. So finally, after all of that, here is the finished painting that I've ended up with. I try my best to keep as much detail from the original as I could, but rather than change it into my own style or anything, I've mostly just tried to apply objectively good design to this painting to enhance it and hopefully have more of the artist's original vision shine through. Because that is the primary function of art, is to be able to translate what's in your mind onto paper, right? And the best artists are those who are able to do just that, giving us a glimpse into their mind. And Nisuki, I hope I've done your vision justice today. And there we go! This video has simultaneously turned out way longer and way shorter than I had anticipated somehow, but I've genuinely had so much fun this week, it is completely unreal. Thanks so much again to Nisuki for kindly providing us with the starting point for today's video. I hope you enjoy it and find it helpful. I hope the rest of you guys have enjoyed it and found it helpful as well, because I genuinely feel like a much better artist after this process, and I would be more than delighted to do more of these in the future so if that's something you're interested in then let me know in the comments below or by giving this video a thumbs up if you find that you vibe with my content and want to see more of it make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you don't miss a future upload on this channel and if you'd like to play along and maybe feature on the next paint over video then come join the discord server it is completely free everyone on there is amazing and we have a whole separate channel where you can share your work for paint over submissions specifically. So check out the link in the description as well as in the pinned comment below. The link is only valid for a week. If you'd like some more in-depth, super detailed tutorials, come check out my Patreon. The link is in the video description as well as probably on the screen somewhere around here right now. 
But with all of that said, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Check out some more videos up here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.